My name is Jong Wook from SK Holdings in South Korea. Today I'm going to talk about the architecture of data analytics service based on cloud. And also I'm going to address what's the difference in delivering a data analytics platform to on-premise cloud. I'm very excited because this is the first introduction of our data analytics service uh, outside of Korea. So today's agenda is first I'm going to introduce about us and then describe the recent trend of data analytics platform and then suggest the architecture of our service and the offering for data analytics service in public cloud and on-premise cloud and hybrid cloud. Um, next roadmap of our service and my colleague Mr. Nam will show you a demo about our service. So who are we? Have you heard about SK? No? No one? <laughs> yeah. SK Group is the second largest business group in South Korea, uh, composed of 95 subsidiary companies. And we share SK brand name and SK managed culture. And we have more than 100,000 employees across worldwide. And last year, the revenue of our uh, group was more than 200 billion US dollar. Uh, <clears throat> SK Holdings is owns uh, SK companies, uh, actually headquarters of uh, SK Group. And we are one of the top, of top three IT service providers in South Korea. Um, we actually deal with many kind of data from all kind of industries. Uh, in SK Group, we have uh, SK Innovation for Petroleum, and SK Telecom, and SK Broadband for IPTV, and SK Hynix, the world's second largest semiconductor manufacturer. And outside of SK Group, we also have many other cu customers in banks and retails and manufacturing and insurance and so on. So that's why we have developed our own data anal analytics platform according to our customer requirements. So let's look at this trend of a data analytics platform. And probably you know that, but yeah, I'll just mention. A data lake is essential to save all kinds of data in order to provide one data source to all data analysts. Once data is stored, then a data catalog can be used for finding the data from the data lake by simple search. And the platform should provide independent analytics environment uh, with the sandbox deployed by cloud computing. And data pipeline is also required for ETL and operations. So after ETL, then data will be ready for data an analysis. So various machine learning and deep learning analytics tools should be provided according to uh, user requirements. So these days, our customers ask for the AutoML service for finding the best algorithms with optimized hyperparameters. And the platform also should provide analytics model lifecycle management. For example, the best model can be deployed as an API for data service. And then the, the performance model must be monitored. And then the platform is able to renew the model if the you know, performance is getting worse. So flexible scalability should be guaranteed and for many analysis works simultaneously. So finally, the platform must be able to provide collaboration tool for data analysis. Yeah, this is a conceptual diagram for data analytics platform based on cloud. So various data types can be saved into data lake, and then the data can be cleaned and processed by the computing node. Eventually, the metadata can be saved in the, into the data catalog. Then the data scientists can deploy a sandbox with, uh, you know, with the specific um, data analytics tool. Then they can extract the data from data lake uh, by referring data catalog uh, using data pipeline. So after after analysis, the model can be developed by the data scientists, can be compared with 
the best model from AutoML, then the best model can be deployed as a RESTful API in the inference area, then real-time process or batch, batch process can interact with those APIs in order to get predicted data set. So those APIs need to support auto-scaling in order to keep reaction speed, and the model performance must be monitored and for model lifecycle management. And this blue box, this blue box needs to support a scalability based on cloud in order to allow many data scientists work together as, at the same time. Yeah, this is the architecture of our service, Equinside Plus. The feature I mentioned for you know, the recent trend of a data analytics platform are fully considered to our architecture. Our architecture composed of three layers as a cloud architecture. The bottom layer is infrastructure service for deploying those containers with R, Python, Spark, and hard clusters. And also it deploys a GPU containers um, for deep learning training with many different libraries. So middleware is path layer. We actually developed this path layer and you know, it composed of a number of modules such as collections, and machine learning, real time, batch, query, and visualization, deep learning. Each module has about 20, 30 APIs. And when we deliver our uh, platform to the on premise, we just combine necessary modules to according to the user requirements uh, because of uh, you know, the microservice architecture. So this layer actually provides very important functions for our services, and such as the dog container orchestrations with multi-tenancy and microservice architecture authentications and authorizations and Java and log management and data and model lifecycle management as well. At the top layer is a service layer. Um, at the moment, we have developed 10 services as a data analytics service, and I'm going to introduce some important services later on. So our architecture addresses a number of uh, you know, technical challenges, such as microservice architecture as, and multi-tenancy, and asynchronous communications, and deploying hardware and spark clusters. But our customers do not need to know about you know, big data technologies and open sources. They can just focus on data analysis. This diagram shows our architecture in detail. So our path layer is actually implemented by Vertex, uh, which is the most popular development toolkit for reactive applications. Vertex provides very convenient development tools such as microservice architecture, a single sign-on, and has a cast for a cluster manager, which actually control a shared cache and uh, event bus and high availability for the platform. So many different types of workers are you know, spread across the platform, and they can execute job from the modules here through the event bus and with round robin scheduling. So this is a simple scenario. User A, user A can create a hard cluster A here. Um, they request to the DHP service here uh, on top, as shown in the blue line. The, the request will be passed to the Hadoop provisioning module. Then this module send the one of the HP workers here. And this worker uh, send the request to the Kubernetes, and Kubernetes deploy Hadoop clusters with a number of Hadoop records. Then the Kubernetes return endpoint of Hadoop records to the the workers then worker cache them into the shared cache, so other workers running in other hosts can use those endpoints for other services. And user B also can create how to close B as user A did, like this. And, and then user B send the ETL job to pipe, batch pipeline service. Then the request will be passed to the batch pipeline uh, BP worker here. And this worker will look up the endpoint of uh, uh, shared cache to find endpoint of UG server in the cluster B. Then 
this worker can submit ETL job to the um, endpoint at the UG server in the class B. By this way, uh, our platform provides scalability, high availability, microservice architecture, and multi-tenancy as well. So I'm going to briefly introduce some services. And so our underlining services is Dynamic Hazard Provisioning DHP service. Uh, it, it provides a managed hazard provisioning service and deploying optimized hazard spark clusters uh, with uh, various hardware echoes, such as uh, uh, Hive, Ooz, Scoop, and Levy, and so on. And it actually caches the endpoint of hardware echoes um, into the shared cache for the other services, as I said before. And then it monitors uh, container resources and applications as well. So after you deploy the cluster, then uh, you need to collect and transform data for data analysis. So our batch pipeline BP service and uh, can make uh, you know easy to draw data pipeline by drag and drop components on the canvas uh, for the Spark ETL. So it it provides interactive mode uh, while you do the workflow. So you can check intermediate data before you submit the job. And it also imports Spark ML model for the batch operations, and you can deploy each patch pipeline to one of your clusters you created or registered. You can also monitor job status and collect uh, and log data from sandboxes. We also provide real-time pipeline, RP service. It's really similar to the patch pipeline service. And it also provides drag and drop and GUI to draw real-time pipeline. Um, so when you click camera icon on each node here, you can snapshot the streaming data by Spark SQL. So you can monitor uh, streaming data by interactive way. You can collect and queue the data into the Kafka and then process the data by Spark Streaming. It also imports a Spark ML model for real-time operations. And you can deploy each, each real-time pipeline to one of the clusters you created. It also supports real-time chart and collects log data from the sandboxes. So after ETL, then data scientists can use a ML modeler service, which actually provides GUI for Spark ML uh, training service. So users can easily create Spark ML pipeline without coding and for distributed Spark ML training. So it also provides data and model management service. And also Spark ML model can be operated by other services, and BP and RP. And Spark ML model can be converted to Python model to interact with the Python native libraries, such as PDP and Lime, to explain the model in detail. So, so far, I've introduced the four services, and DHP, PP, RP, and ML model services, they can combine as a data analytics service um, using Spark technologies such as Spark Core, Spark Streaming, Spark Machine Learning, and Spark SQL. We also provide DL model service, and which actually provide DL model lifecycle management. Uh, we provide uh, built-in algorithms for text and image classifications and also provide custom mode with Jupyter Notebook for coding. With the horrible technology, and DL training can be easily distributed um, across multiple GPUs on multiple nodes. So after you develop DL model, then platform is able to uh, train, train several trainings at the same time. So DL models can be deployed as a Raspberry API by click. We also have a visualizing service, Data Insight. It actually provides a number of data adapters to collect the data from various data sources. And it also provides data set management service, so you can manipulate data as you want, changing schema, something like that. With the change of data, you can draw the chart and make a dynamic dashboard with the chart. 
It was supposed quarry and schedule for updating child. So we, we offer data analytics service in public cloud. So our customers can combine a number of services for batch predictions. Uh, this is a simple scenario. And so DHP used for provisioning top containers and then batch pipeline for ETL jobs and then ML model service for training machine learning model, then batch pipeline for operations importing the ML models. So this scenario can be applied to various business use cases such as product recommendations and customer segmentations and churn and demand predictions and power generation predictions and supply chain management and so on. So in, in particular, the ETL and training operations can be done in the same sandbox. We also offer real-time predictions, and the process is really similar to batch predictions. The only difference is a real-time real pipeline is used for the operations instead of batch pipeline service. So Kafka can be used for data ingestion, and then at the end of the real-time pipeline, data can be sent to the ELK stack or uh, data warehouse for further analysis. This scenario also can be applied to the you know, number of real-time businesses, such as intrusion detections and detecting equipment failure, and real-time marketing and fraud detections, IoT services, and something like that. So we offer over on-premise cloud as well. When we deliver our platform to on-premise, we provide you know, many different aspects from public service. And uh, first of all, we deliver our platform with combining um, necessary services according to the customer requirements. Uh, for example, we can deliver a page pipeline, real-time pipeline on your existing hardware clusters inside of a sandbox. Uh, some customers ask for DHP and BP only, and other customers a bunch of services, uh, such as DHP, BP, RP, DI, uh, ML model or something like that. So there are many different use cases available. Uh, it is possible because our parcel layer is implemented by microservice architecture. We also provide a provider system for provisioning top containers. So we separate GUI for administrators. Uh, we also provide dynamic dashboard. And so each user can make you know, different dashboard with different view uh, according to the role. So we customize our platform and services as required. And so, for example, we can add uh, some specific data processing as uh, components on the service, BP or RP. Then our customers do not need the code for data process or machine learning uh, things. We also integrate with uh, our platform with new local systems, <coughs> such as Data Lake, and metadata, RDBMS, Kafka, uh, ETL solutions, job scheduler, and single sign-on, uh, etc. Whatever you have, you can we can uh, integrate with your system. We also train users and operators, and for service and uh, platform. Um, uh, these days, we focus on training for resellers in Korea. Um, in our business perspective, uh, our strength is customizing and integrating our platform with uh, your local systems. We also offer hybrid cloud and combining on-premise with the public cloud. At the moment, we just have developed um, public, a hybrid cloud with AWS public cloud. So our customers can reuse analytics model and their pipeline developed in on-premise with the AWS public services, such as EKS for the provisioning top containers and EMRs for VM, something like that. So the key point is DHP can create a cluster in AWS public cloud, and then it caches the endpoint of hard records into the, into the shared cache. So 
So other services such as BP, RPA, ML modelers can use those endpoints for uh, data process and machine learning training. And this is our roadmap. And last year, we have launched our data analytics service in our public cloud. It was a B2B service. And this year, we try to upgrade our platform, especially for on-premise delivery. And so um, some cases I use the AI platform. Uh, we have developed um, more services and hybrid cloud with AWS Google Cloud. And also we focus on AutoML uh, for enhancement of our uh, machine learning uh, modeling service. Next, we try to connect our platform to other platforms, uh, such as data brokers and marketplace and, and advertisement platform, something like that. We try to extend our you know, hybrid cloud with the Google Cloud and also MS Azure Cloud. Uh, we try to add more useful business, useful business APIs on our platform. So this concludes my presentations. And hopefully you understand how our platform works and what you offer. And in, in, in Korea, we have, we have success you know, stories, especially in delivering um, our platform to the on-premise. Uh, I think it's ready to you know, deliver our platform to overseas. Yeah, that's why we come to here. So now my colleague, Mr. Nam, show you a demo about our platform. Thank you for waiting. Uh, my name is Jin Nam, and I'm a software developer of the DHP service. And I want to talk about one thing first. Uh, this demo is really fast because of the time limit. So if you want to see the more detail about it, or if you have any questions about it, just feel free to come after the session. And this, de this demo have two cases. One is about real-time processing, and the second one is about batch processing. So we are moving to the first one. Uh, the first one is the Twitter sentiment analysis, which means we are going to get the tweet from Twitter and then analyze each text if it is positive or negative by the machine learning algorithm. So we need a Hadoop cluster first. So go to the DHP service and put the name and description of it. And you have uh, two options to create the cluster. So if you choose the detail setting, then you can configure all the details about the each pod, such as hardware resources or like storage options and S3 configurations. But if you don't want to care about all these things, you can just choose the quick start and then all you need to do is to select the chart and uh, select the Hadoop ecosystem you want to install together. So after click the create button, it takes only one and a half minutes to finish to configure the every pass. And then I'm going to the using real-time pipeline. It is simply a combination of Kafka and Flume. So I'm going to make a Kafka topic first. It's really simple. Just click the Create button, and then put the name of topic. After that, the topic will be created on the cluster we just made. And I'm going to make a collector. It consists of three components the source, channel, and sync. And everything is formed of independent node. So you just drag and drop down on the canvas, whatever you want, and then connect them with the arrows like this, and set the property of each node. So for example, if you see the Kafka sync, you need to choose the cluster and then a topic you want to push the data to. And then I'm going to create the streaming workflow. Oh, before that, if you execute it on the selected cluster, then the collector 
will be executed. And if you go back to the topic and click the detail button, then you can see the raw data in that topic. And uh, I create the streaming. I already made it, so let's see what's going on here. The first Kafka node loads the data from the topic in the cluster. After that, the JSON node parses the data from the Kafka reader. And if you click the auto parsing button, you can see the raw data and the parsed data as form of the column name and a data type. And then I'm going to do the data pre-processing for the training model. So uh, if you may remember, the raw data has unnecessary characters, such as emoticons or URLs, something like that. So I'm going to remove everything in the text. And then the label node the labels each text if it is positive or negative. I already put the files in HDFS, uh, which has a list of positive or negative word. So this labeling node figure out if the text has a word in the positive word list, then it labels it as a positive or negative otherwise. And then I vectorize the text column for the machine learning training and then store the result to the hive. And go back to the list. You can execute it on the selected cluster. And then if you click the name of the streaming workflow, you can see the detail about it. It refreshes every five seconds. And then if you click the snapshot button, you can see the data after executing that node. So if you click, after the data processing, there is no emoticon anymore. And the, after the label node, the new column labels will be created. And it's an, after the vectorized node, the new column will be created as a vector. And since we are stored the result in the Hive, let's go to the Hive browser to look at the data. The, it's in the pipeline service and the uh, Hive data will be stored in that path. And uh, if you click the file, then you can see the data in the file. And I'm going to use this data to make the training model. So let's move on to the ML modeler. And I'm going to import the data set first. It's stored in the HDFS, so I'll set up the path and then the name of the data set. And I'll skip the more property things. And then go to the workspace, import the data set. And then you can select the algorithm. There are already more than 20 preset algorithms here, so I'm going to use the GBT classifier in this case. If you select the algorithm, then the description will be shown on the right. And you can set up the property as the description says. And then if you click the Run button, you can choose the cluster you want to use. And then after you put the name of the model, and you need to set the path to export the model. After that, the model will be created, and you can download it on your local system, or you can just use the path of this model. So I'm going to use it. And there is another streaming workflow here. It's similar to the past one, but it, the difference is I used a clone node at the bottom. So it makes the data goes two ways. And then the string contain node filters the text uh, with a certain keyword. I put 
the word iPhone 11 since the Apple just announced a new iPhone when I made this demo. So after that, the vectorize the text and I use the ML pipeline node, it makes the ML prediction with the model we just made. And SQL node the sum the result up and I push the result to my Elasticsearch. So um, go back to the list, execute this streaming, and then if you look at the detail, so at this time, I am going to look at the Spark scroll. And you can uh, SQL command directly to the data, and then you can also draw a chart about the recent data too. So if you click this, there is um, a chart of recent data. And also we push the data to the Elasticsearch so you can draw a chart by using Kibana like this. It's like pretty similar. And let's move on to the second one, the batch processing. Uh, it is called the soft sensor. Uh, it's just a software working like a hardware sensor. We made this for the gas refinery. Uh, I heard that the flash point is one of the most important factor in petrochemical process. But it cannot be the measure every single time for some reason, so we are going to use the machine learning algorithm to make a prediction of the flash point. So in this case, we are using batch pipeline service. It's more complicated, but it has a three part. Uh, first ETL part, import the data, and then do the data processing for the machine learning and export to the storage object. And then the second part, import the data from the storage object and then make the machine learning prediction. And the final ETR part, join them together and push to the storage object again to visualize it. So in this case, I import the file from ICOS, which is IBM storage service, and it's like, all values from the hardware sensors and the timestamp, uh, each actual flash, flash point values and the timestamp. And we are gonna join them together and remove unnecessary data and export to the several different objects. And then in machine learning part, I used four different ML nodes and I already made four different models with the different algorithm, which are the random forest, decision tree, and linear regression with the different property. So in this case, I just import the model from S3 and the data is imported from the S3 too. And this final ETL node just join them together in a one file. And I'll show them one thing. If you click the ETL node or every single node and click the source button, then you can see the Python code translated from the workflow. So save the workflow and then you can execute it. And after the execution, you can see the green light like this, it means it's progressing now. And if you go back to the list and click the detail button and click the job ID, then you can also see the same thing, but in this page, you can see the log of the work or the error logs too, or the yarn history, by using the DHP service or other details like UG parameter or the cluster log as well. And after the execution, the everything turns to blue. It means the job is succeed. 
And uh, since we export the data to the S3, then I'm going to visualize it by using the data insight service. I already imported data from it. So if you click the name, you can see the column and actual value. And in the dashboard, I already draw a line chart. It consists of the actual value and the four prediction from the different algorithm. So you can also show or remove the line by clicking the legend. So I removed the farthest one from the actual value, then you can see, oh, sorry. Then you can see the prediction from the random forest will make the most closest the prediction from the real value. Uh, this is what I prepared for today. So thank you for coming here. Thank you.